Inside DeKalb. Inside your community. Inside your government. With me, Paula Gwen Grant. Inside DeKalb. Welcome to Inside DeKalb. I'm Paula Gwen Grant. Thanks for tuning in. We are here at the DeKalb County Emergency Management Agency's headquarters. This is where they coordinate local agencies to respond to the needs of the county in the event of an emergency. We have a lot of good stories, great stories to share with you. We're going to tell you what's going on inside DeKalb County. First up, since we are here in the Emergency Operations Center, where DeKalb County's major decision makers gather to coordinate the best response to all types of emergencies, right now we have DCTV's Aviva Hoffman. Thank you, Paula. You know, Tropical Storm Irma hit DeKalb very hard, and our first responders, our road crews, our officials were ready. Although it was a tropical storm when it landed here, Irma still left a trail of damage throughout our county. Two days after Irma hit, DeKalb CEO Michael Thurman issued a local state of emergency to enable the county to receive state and federal resources for cleanup efforts and recovery. Irma is blamed for one death in our county and for at least $11 million of insured losses and an untold amount of uninsured losses. With the coordination of the DeKalb Emergency Management Agency, county departments and public safety first responders worked around the clock to ensure the safety of DeKalb citizens. It's the coordination and the behind the scenes that we help with that makes the actual incident run smoother and has brought folks together better. Everybody needs to know what their part is and when it comes time, nobody thinks about, oh, how big and how you know horrible this may be. We just go to work. That's what we do. The calls picked up. We actually were, were taking more calls than we did during the big snowmageddon when we had folks trapped on the interstates. Uh, the 911 center was getting inundated with calls. Uh, they sustained for about five hours over 650 calls per hour, which is incredibly busy for the 911 center. 250 calls are average during a typical rush hour in the 911 center. DeKalb firefighters responded to their usual calls during the storm, in addition to hundreds more calls about downed trees and wires. There was over 1,700 calls responded to within 36 hours. You know, that means that in many cases, they probably came in that morning reported to work for the 24-hour shift, and they may not have returned to the station until the end of the shift. Our Board of Health officials were in the mix too, overseeing many health and safety responsibilities while also ensuring the safety of our food and water supplies. If there's a power loss, you know, we need to work with restaurants and other public places to make sure that the food that they are managing is still safe to use, and if not, we need to give them directions on how to dispose of it. It depends on how long the power goes out, if it goes out for a long time, this food needs to be assessed to make sure it's even safe. During emergencies, DeKalb's Geographic Information Systems, or GIS, plays a vital role in the first responders community. Settings matter, and GIS is our responsible responsibility to get that data out to the people in the field as, as quick as possible. GIS makes data sharing easy with its creation of specialized maps and apps. One of the examples that we created for the emergency management department is they wanted to know where all the trees were down. And we took that information, we created web maps. When we created those web maps, they were able to put that on, on their laptops or on their mobile phones or any type of devices in the field where they can see that information real time. Our recent drought conditions, combined with the onslaught of heavy rains and winds from Irma, were too much for hundreds of trees in DeKalb. They came crashing down on our yards, homes, businesses, roadways, and power lines. We had sustained winds of 25 miles an hour with gusts up to 45 and some recorded at 60. During the middle of the storm, the winds got so severe on top of Stone Mountain that they stopped recording. During the height of the storm, more than half the county was in the dark. Within four days, 95% of all power outages in DeKalb were restored. The quick turnaround is due in large part to early preparation. The county began planning for Irma well before the storm arrived in DeKalb. Well, we started preparing the week prior. We started cleaning out storm drains, um, 
taking care of weep holes on bridges, making sure that uh, we wouldn't have flooding issues because we didn't know exactly how much rain we were going to get. Similar to first responders schedules in emergencies, DeKalb road crews reported to work after hours prior to the Monday storm for 16 hour shifts to ensure the county had nonstop coverage to keep our community safe and our roads clear. We care about the people of DeKalb County and we wanted to make sure that we could clear the roads and remove debris in record time so we could get people's lives back to normal. DeKalb crews relied on the power company to ensure power lines were de-energized before removing any trees entangled in wires. That can add to the time it takes to clear a road, but it's necessary for everyone's safety. Of 2,000 miles of roads in DeKalb, approximately 400 streets were impacted by trees and storm debris. DeKalb crews cleared more than 2,000 tons of debris from our roads, and all roads closed because of Irma were reopened within days. The grade that I think for the preparations and the interoperability and the communication on this event was an A+. Nevertheless, DeKalb officials will participate in a debriefing session to examine the preparedness and response to Tropical Storm Irma to help ensure the county is ready for the next big event. Great job, wonderful work, Aviva, and I'm so proud. A big thank you to all who really helped in this big, great big process. I know it was a lot of work. DeKalb is always ready. And in wake of such disasters, health is a huge priority, especially here in DeKalb County. Now in that spirit, the DeKalb County Board of Health held their first ever drive-through flu clinic, uh -huh. providing residents with an easy and convenient way to protect themselves in the upcoming flu season. Crystal Thomas has that story. As fall approaches and with flu season right around the corner, it's more important now than ever that DeKalb County residents take the first and most important step in flu prevention by getting their flu shots. The DeKalb County Board of Health held their very first drive-through flu shot clinic to not only provide residents with a convenient way to receive their flu shots, but also to test the Board of Health's emergency preparedness capabilities should a mass vaccination be needed. We're charged with getting medications or immunizations into the entire community in two days. So that's 750,000 people in two days. And so we do practice exercises to try to see what that would look like. How are we gonna make that happen? So this is one way of trying to achieve that through a drive through clinic. The CDC recommends the flu shot for anyone between the ages of six months and older. During the flu clinic, participants drove through three separate stations. At the first, they filled out paperwork and provided payment. Then they moved on to the second station where they received their flu shot. Lastly, they were asked to go to their final station where they waited 15 minutes after receiving their flu shots to make sure they had no adverse reactions. Two options for the vaccine were offered, the standard vaccine and the high dose vaccine for those 65 and older. I just had my physical a couple of months ago. It was really not quite time to do a flu shot, but um, so I didn't get it then. And uh, when I saw your sign, I thought, oh, this is too easy. It certainly is nice to be able to just stick your arm out the window and be done with it. The drive through flu clinic was conducted under the Centers for Disease Control's Strategic National Stockpile Program, which provides the nation's largest supply of medicines and supplies for use in a public health emergency. This program has uh, been put in place by CDC uh, where we have to dispense emergency medications within 48 hours to the public when we know that we have, have an uh, outbreak of some sort. It's a learning experience for us too, but it's also a great way of getting flu shots into the community. If you miss the Board of Health's drive through flu shot clinic, don't worry. You can visit their website for a list of locations where you can get your flu shots all year round. Crystal Thomas, Inside the Cab. Thanks, Crystal. Now, for more information about the flu or the DeKalb County Board of Health's immunization programs, go to www.decabhealth.net slash flu or call 404-294-3700. Coming up next on Inside DeKalb, a local resident receives the celebration of a lifetime. And later on Inside DeKalb. Check it out free Wi-Fi that you can take home. I'll have more on that story coming up.
All that and more coming up next on Inside the Cab. Have you mixed your pain meds, your sleep meds, your allergy meds? Call the Poison Helpline. Has your child swallowed household cleaner, a chip of paint, a wild mushroom? Call the Poison Helpline. Have you been bitten by a spider, a snake, an insect? Call the Poison Helpline. Poisonings can happen at the home, on the job, or in the great outdoors. Call the Poison Helpline first to speak with medical professionals who can give you free personal advice anytime. 1-800-222-1222. Save the number, save a life. Welcome back to Inside DeKalb. I'm Paula Gwen Grant. I'm here in the Situation Room. Mm -hmm. at the DeKalb Emergency Management Agency's headquarters. Now, this next story is a story of triumph, and it's kind of a different situation, a situation we're proud to highlight. DCTV's director, Diamond Lewis, joins us now. Diamond? Now, Paula, I was driving into work one day right along this road and heard all of this cheering and saw tons of pink and white balloons. And I decided, as a journalist, of course, to nose around and pull over and see what was going on. And I want you to take a look at this package, a special report of all of the excitement as one community came together to celebrate a woman and her journey and her fight against breast cancer. Just like me on my trek into work that day, Joanna Duke and her husband also drove into their Decatur neighborhood and noticed some unusual activity just near their home. I noticed the police cars first and I was like, oh no, what's happening on our street? And then I noticed all the cars lining the street and I thought, oh, and then I noticed the pink ribbons and I said, oh, and then of course turned to my husband, did you know about this? <laughs> Her family and friends had decided to throw a surprise party to celebrate a major milestone in Joanna's life, her last round of chemotherapy. Joanna was diagnosed with breast cancer almost a year earlier on December 23rd, 2016. That day is also her mother's birthday. And today we were celebrating her final six months run of chemotherapy. Now she lost her hair and we got a fancy wig. We dress fun things like this, but today she finished the round of chemotherapy. When I was first diagnosed, you know, as I think most people, the first thing you think is, am I gonna die? And then the next thing you think is, do I have to have chemo? Following her diagnosis, Joanna underwent a mastectomy, and not long after her surgery, she began chemotherapy. It's a long journey, and to be able to break it up into these individual milestones, is, and celebrate those individual milestones is so important because that's what keeps you going through such a extended period. And her total treatment time is almost two years, and that's a long time to be going through the physical changes, the emotional difficulties that come along with an illness like this. So being able to celebrate these small victories is a big deal. I love that my community and the people that are supporting me through this are celebrating each and every one of these milestones because it's a long haul. I mean, this started for me in December of 2016 and they've been there every step of the way and I know that I'll continue to have their love and support, which is what will keep me going through it all. Having seen how she's approached this, how she's behaved, and just the example that she's been to those within our lives has been nothing short of amazing. But the party on that day, much like this entire community's groundswell of support for Joanna and her family, did not end there. In fact, just a few days later, Joanna decided to turn the tables a bit and host her own party to say thank you to all of those who helped to carry her during some of the most challenging times during her own fight for her life. <laughs> she has just faced this trial with such courage and joy and authenticity that it has just been an inspiration. Joanna's close friends and family weren't the only ones present for this event. Those who protect and serve in her community also came to show their support and celebrate this milestone with her. We try to uh, be involved in the community as much as possible. Uh, any opportunity we have to come out and, and be involved in the community, we take that opportunity to be visible and just to show the community that we appreciate them as much as they appreciate us. Having served in Afghanistan, Joanna's husband is no stranger to battle and says he's ready to face the fight head on, hand in hand with his wife of 18 years. 
We finished the chemo portion at this time, but her next step is she'll be going into radiation for about two months of radiation. That'll be followed by biological drugs for another six months. And then finally, a reconstructive surgery at the end of all of this. All of these people that are here have delivered meals to my family. They've picked my kids up from school. They've, um, you know, paid to have cleaners come to my house. And um, they've been tangible resources during these really tough months of recovering from surgery and chemo and my party was a way for me to give back to them in a way to say thank you because we absolutely could not have done it without their support. And remember, early detection is key and can mean the difference between life or death in the fight against breast cancer. If you're considered low income or have lack of health insurance and are between the ages of 40 and 64, call the DeKalb County Board of Health at 404 294-3700. You just may qualify for a free breast exam or mammogram, so make sure you give them a call. Paula, back to you. Diamond, that is a wonderful story. That is truly something to celebrate. Hey, this next story we have is another great health story, and it features the men of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. Crystal Thomas has this one. Crystal? Thanks, Paula. So the men of Omega Sci-Fi hosted a health and wellness expo where they discussed a few different things, such as health and wellness, preventative measures, and mental health. They also discussed rolling over cancer. A special motorcycle ride and health expo in DeKalb County is helping combat cancer and share important health information. The Atlanta area chapters of the Omega Sci-Fi fraternity recently joined forces to host a public health-centered event, Rolling Over Cancer. More than 60 motorcycle riders and dozens of others took part. What the ladies do? What we've done is brought out all the brothers that's come from all over the United States, actually some from D.C., some from Tampa, ridden down to Atlanta. They each had the goal of saving lives and keeping families healthy for generations to come. They circled Metro Atlanta via 285 with a little bit of help from DeKalb's finest. All to bring awareness to the rest of the community. As we say in the fraternity, you know, friendship is essential to the soul. And the thing about friendship is that, you know, in order to be a friend, you got to first be friendly. And, you know, we're here today to, to show that, you know, that Omega Sci-Fi have love for the community. Healthcare agencies were on hand for this free expo to share information and provide free prostate, mammogram, and blood pressure screenings. Prevention is the best medicine. So you know, get your annual exam, have a, have a good relationship with your primary care um, because it's, it's so important, especially with men. Men go to the doctor when they're sick, so <laughs> it's important to go when you're not sick. While preventative care is very important, it can be overlooked. Even for some individuals who have health insurance, many still don't get the cancer screenings or take advantage of early detection and prevention programs. If we can help to increase that level of engagement in our communities, primarily our African-American communities that we're talking about in this community, we increase the likelihood of, of good outcomes. Reaching people who may or may not, uh, may not have actually gone into their provider to get some screening and now that we've been able to touch a large group of people who, who with a brotherhood can actually say, um, I, want, I want, you know, wife, mom, daughter, I want you to go in and get your screening because I love you and I want you to be around for a while. That's right, and proceeds from this event will go to the St. Jude Hospital and the Atlanta Cancer Wellness Center. Crystal Thomas, Inside the Cab. Back to you, Paula. Crystal, fantastic. Thank you. I love the way the Omegas roll. Coming up next on Inside the Cab, South the Cab has a heart for celebration. And later on Inside the Cab, Elena Daniel has a story you don't want to miss. Are you planning a big event? DeKalb County has the perfect place to host your special occasion. Family reunion, wedding, baby shower, graduation, birthday party, or reception, DeKalb Senior Community Centers can accommodate a variety of celebrations. 
custom designed just for you. Rental space is available Thursday through Sunday. Each facility offers many amenities. Whether you're looking for large spaces with great views, classrooms for meetings and workshops, or if you need to include audiovisual services, tables, chairs, a prep kitchen, or more, one of DeKalb County Senior Community Centers is sure to fit your needs. Schedule your appointment today to take a tour at one of the following special event venues. Central DeKalb Senior Center on McConnell Drive in Decatur, phone number 770-492-5464. The Lou Walker Senior Center on Panola Road in Lithonia, phone number 770-322-2939. The North DeKalb Senior Center on Malone Drive in Chambly. Phone number 404-353-7667 or 404-451-3568. Or the South DeKalb Senior Center on Candler Road in Decatur. Phone number 404-286-7937. For more information on DeKalb's event venues, call an event specialist at 770-322-2939. Welcome back to Inside the Cab. I'm Paula Gwen Grant. I love being outside. It's a beautiful day, and it's always a great thing we can thank our first responders. I'm out here at DeKalb Police and Fire Headquarters. Recently, I was outside with the community celebrating in South DeKalb. We had a great time. For the fifth year in a row, residents in South DeKalb pulled together families and businesses with the full support of Commissioner Larry Johnson for the Heart of South DeKalb Festival. On a beautiful day, residents took to the streets for a parade celebrating their love and desire for the best for their county, neighbors, and future. This is the heart of South DeKalb that was created by residents of South DeKalb. And so happened to be in District 3, so I'm just out here to support them and whatever I can do. These are committed people, these are loving people, people that want to see the best for DeKalb County. They talk about senior activities, uh, stress relief, how to plan for college, uh, what you need to do in terms of uh, the registering the vote, uh, just a whole host of things in our community and services. It's a day of fun and festivities, celebrating what has been and what South DeKalb is building itself up to be. The day was full of cheer, featuring the children and youth in particular. Congressman Hank Johnson stopped by to share in the day and encourage residents to focus not on Washington, but on their own community. Let's make sure that we take care of the business on the streets, in our communities, in our homes. Basic principles are what we really need to bring out now in the face of all of these complicated issues that seem to be facing our country. We've got to make sure that we take care of the business on the bottom. And if we do that, the top will reflect what we're doing. Many other local and state officials joined the South DeKalb community for the day, registering people to vote and acknowledging accomplishments. Since the day was truly for everyone, the heart of South DeKalb Festival did not forget to include our veterans. If you've served in the military, have a son or daughter who served in the military. Woo! I'm actually out here for a reason, and that's to let people know about our DeKalb County Veterans Treatment Court. A day of unity in South DeKalb, celebrating the good with the heart of South DeKalb Festival. It's always good for the community to get together around something positive. A great day in South DeKalb. Elena Daniel is here now with this story about how new threads can help provide new opportunities. Elena? Thanks, Paula. We're going to take a look at some DeKalb County residents who got some new clothes and a new lease on life. A new suit or a new outfit can make a person feel, well... I feel good. <laughs> but these men and women aren't just celebrating getting new clothes. They are celebrating a new lease on life, and it's all thanks to DeKalb County Accountability Court. We serve high-risk, high-need felony offenders, um, those that typically have you know, lost their way through addiction. DeKalb County Accountability Court helps nonviolent offenders and addresses risk factors that lead to frequent incarceration. Through its Veterans Treatment Court, 
Drug Court, and Felony Mental Health Court, the staff is helping DeKalb residents become productive members of society again. Most cases, you know, a lot of times they're the ones whose families have given up on them. And so this program is their last ditch to get it together versus going into the criminal justice system more likely prison. And so we're trying to do something different. We don't want to do business as usual. We want to provide an alternative. And these alternative court programs are helping participants change their lives for the better. I was like a lost puppy, out in the weather, running with the wrong crowd, always looking over your shoulder. You know, today, I don't have all that. I can, I can walk past the Cab County Jail without worrying about going inside. These court programs not only address the participants' issues like drug addiction or mental health, the staff helps to restore core values and their spirit. It brought back my confidence, because I didn't have no confidence, no morals, no dignity about myself. And they teach me how to incorporate that back. I'm almost 60 years old, and with Veterans Court, Hey, I got a future. And Gary isn't the only one with a bright future. Pamela plans to open her own beauty shop after she graduates from her program. It's helped me a whole life. And again, um, with me struggling with addiction, like it has actually saved my life. And I just wanted to live differently and do something different. And they've helped me do that. As the world watches as these participants make their way back into society, they hope they can inspire others who may need help getting back on track. So it's inspiration to be there. And with me doing what I'm doing now, you know I can inspire somebody else. Because you can't, you can't keep it if you don't give it away. That's the whole point. Once I get it, I give it away to somebody else. And that brings somebody else to it because we're at the same time. I would say not to give up, give yourself a chance, um, don't put yourself down, like I, I've never thought that I would deserve something like this, so like we're always of deserving things that we work hard for. And these participants definitely deserve what comes next after their program, a second chance at living a better life. We had a ton of fun doing this story, Paula. You would be surprised at the transformation and they're excited about starting their new lives. I'm Elena Daniel, Inside DeKalb. Thanks so much, Elena. Now coming up next on Inside DeKalb. No internet? No problem. Coming up, learn about a DeKalb library program that brings the internet to you. It's all coming up on Inside DeKalb. Welcome back to Inside DeKalb. I'm Paula Gwen Grant. I think our library system here in DeKalb County is the best in the nation. You think so too? Uh-huh. Well, some of our libraries are the perfect spots for some of us who might need a hot spot. DCTV's Aviva Hoffman has more. There's been a big shift recently in the resources and services offered at your neighborhood library. Libraries are more than books. And we have continued to evolve as technology has changed. People have gone from wanting to read books on paper to wanting to read ebooks and download more information from the internet. We've evolved to meet those needs. That's right. Libraries are keeping up with the changing times. And now a new pilot program at Select DeKalb Library Branches gives patrons the ability to check out the internet and take it home with them. You come in as a person with your library card and you check out a hotspot. You get to actually check it out for 28 days. 
We check books out for 21 days. During those four weeks with the borrowed hotspot, you can connect to the internet for free, whether you're at home or on the road. You use it with your laptop or whatever other wireless enabled device you own, and you don't have to necessarily wait until the library's open to come and use the internet. In today's world, some might find it hard to believe that access to Wi-Fi can be a problem. About 30% of the population does not have home internet or Wi-Fi access. We've also learned that DeKalb County School System is going to provide students next year with um, laptop devices and other electronic devices and they may need Wi-Fi access at home. So we as a county library would like to be a source of internet access um, for people in our community that need it. If it takes you a little bit longer to complete your homework or finish a few more online job applications, you'll have the means to do it on your own schedule with the mobile hotspot. DeKalb resident Aura Gibbs is one of the first to benefit from this pilot program. The librarian approached me and said, I notice your kids come over here a lot and use the internet. We are getting a device that you can actually take home and utilize right in your home. And I'm like, yes, sign me up. <laughs> Aura says she uses Wi-Fi service quite a bit. And in her household, twins Ruth and Esther Gibbs use it a lot. They plan to eventually get their own internet service at home but in the meantime this is an excellent excellent substitute usually when I come here I have to borrow a private room and the limitation is two hours that's not enough for me <laughs> I need about eight hours for some of the projects that I've been working on so it's meant a lot I can work in the comfort of my own home uh, I can work in my nightgown if I want and still have access to the internet. Ruth took the lead and helped set up the mobile hotspot at their house. Really it was very simple. We just turned it on and then you have to go to your Wi-Fi controls on the computer, type in the password and then you're connected. It's made life a whole lot easier for them. They have a lot of modern devices. We have a laptop, a desktop. We have two phones at the house that, well, we have four, but two phones that we hooked up the Wi-Fi to and we have another laptop and a PS4. It's easy to take the internet and Wi-Fi service for granted, but it really is a big part of our lives. We use the internet for practically everything. To when you don't know where to go, GPS, you can look it up on your phone. You know, you can look up words on your phone, definitions, get examples. You can research anything. If you, like, want to know something, just look it up on Google or it's easy, quick. I asked the girls what exactly they plan to do after they return the mobile hotspot back to the library. Back to the library. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> the pilot program is funded in part by the DeKalb Library and the DeKalb Library Foundation, which hopes to see this program grow. A lot of us would love to see this project at every branch. Since the program is currently in the pilot phase, there are a limited number of hotspot devices available. That means, for right now at least, you can't put a hold on a mobile hotspot, get on a waiting list, or renew it as you would a library book. DeKalb wants to make sure everybody gets a turn with the devices. There are currently four branches offering mobile hotspots for checkout. You'll find them offered at the Shambly, Decatur, Flat Shoals, and Stonecrest Libraries. When you're ready to check out a hotspot, it's best to call ahead and double check on availability. So bring the device home and connect to your phone, tablet, or PC to access free Wi-Fi. Reporting from the Stonecrest Library, Aviva Hoffman, Inside DeKalb. Thanks, Aviva. Well, that's the end of our show. Can you believe it? Don't worry now. We're always out and about in the DeKalb community, bringing you the news and information that you can truly use.